Alright, so in this Unity Beginner tutorial, we're gonna create a health bar and a health script for this character. So let's just get started. So first of all, we're gonna stop the game and we're gonna go to our character. On the character, as you can see, we have a rigid body and also a capsule collider. We can go also to the scene view. And if you click over here, as you can see, this is my capsule collider over here. Now we can disable this and now we can get started with the health bar. So we're gonna go to the character, right click it, go to UI and select a slider over here. As you can see, a slider has been added and now we can click over here to the canvas. And first of all, we're gonna set the render mode to world space. So we're gonna select world space over here. And now we can select over here the position X and lower it to zero. Also do the same for the Y axis and for the Z axis like this. Now, as you can see, the slider is huge over here. So we're gonna reduce the size. So we're gonna type 0 0.005 like this. This is gonna be fine. And also we're gonna copy this and paste it to the rest of the axis. All right, so now we're gonna select our canvas and move it up a little bit above the character like this. And now if you go to the game window and press play, as you can see, we have a slider over here. We can also move it up a little bit. So we're gonna stop the game and move it up a little bit like this. I'm gonna put it over here and press play. And now as you can see, we have a slider over here. And if you click over here, we can move this around. Now we don't want this to happen. So we're gonna stop the game and go to the slider and go to interactable over here and disable it like this. Now if you click play, the players are no longer gonna be able to interact with this. And we can actually use this inside our script. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna increase the size a little bit. So we're gonna go over here and set it to 1.5 like this. And we're also gonna go to the slider over here and we're gonna go to the handler area and we're gonna delete it. All right, so this is gonna be fine. The next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the scene view over here, go to the slider. And as you can see over here, we have a value and we're gonna set it to the maximum like this. And now as you can see, it's not completely full because we deleted the handle and we're gonna go to over here. And we're just gonna go to the fill area and increase it a little bit like this. All right, so this is gonna be fine. Now we're gonna go back to our slider and go to the value and reduce it a little bit. And now we can change the color. So we're gonna go to the background area first, go to the color and go to, and we're gonna set this to darker red like this. Now we're gonna go to our fill area to fill over here and go to the color and we're also gonna set it to bright red like this. The next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna select our canvas over here, right click it, go to UI again, and we're gonna be adding text like this. All right, so the next thing that we're gonna do is we're just gonna drag and drop it under the slider like this. And we're gonna go over here and we're gonna type 1000 slash 1000. All right, so now we're gonna be setting this to bool. So we're gonna select this over here and we're gonna reduce the font size to 12 like this. And now we're gonna go over here and set this to the center like this. All right, so this is gonna be fine as you can see. Now the last thing that we're gonna do is also we're gonna be setting this to the black color. So we're gonna go to over here and set it to black. All right, so it's gonna be fine. Now, the next thing that we have to do is if you click play right now, and if you go to the character, select the character, we can rotate it. And as you can see, the slider is gonna rotate with the character. So we don't want this to happen. So we want the slider to always face the camera. So to do this, we're gonna select our canvas over here and we're gonna be adding a brand new script. So we're gonna name the script rotate towards camera like this and we're gonna create it. All right, so now we can double click on the script like this. And what we're gonna do is first of all, we have to link the camera to the script. So we're gonna type private camera and name it main camera like this. Now we're gonna go to the start function, which runs only once when you start up the game. So we can actually link the camera over here. So we're gonna type main camera equals camera dot main like this. And inside of the update function that loops all the time, uh, once per frame and we're first of all we're gonna check if the main camera has been linked so we're gonna type if main camera is not new which means that the camera has been linked and inside of here we're gonna rotate the canvas towards the camera so we're gonna type transform dot look at like this and inside the brackets we're gonna type transform dot position plus main camera dot transform dot rotation and we're gonna multiply this by vector three dot forward like this. And now we're gonna type comma, and we're also gonna type main camera dot transform dot rotation. And we're gonna multiply this by vector three dot up like this. All right, so this is gonna be fine. Now we can actually save this, go back to Unity. And now if you click play, we can select our character and rotate it around. As you can see, the help bar always stays rotated towards the camera. We can also move the camera, so select the camera and move it a little bit to the side. And also we can rotate it a little bit. And as you can see, the help bar always stays rotated towards the camera, so this is fine. So we can actually use this as a help bar. All right, so the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna select our camera and add our health script. So we're gonna go to add component 
and we're going to add a brand new script so we're going to name it player control we can add a brand new script click create and add and open the script again all right so over here first of all we're going to be linking the tmp pro so we're going to type using tmp pro like this now we're going to go over here and link our slider so we're going to type public slider and we're going to name it hellbar like this and now, as you can see, if this hadn't been added automatically, you also have to add using unityengine.ui. Alright, so now we're going to go over here and we're going to be adding also the text. So we're going to type public TMP text like this and we're going to name it health text like this. And now what we have to do is also add the health of the player. So we're going to type public int health and we're going to be setting this to 100. And also we have to add the maximum health. So we're gonna type public int maximum health. And we're gonna set this to zero right now. And what we're gonna do next is we're gonna go to the start function, which runs only once when you start of the game, which means that the player is gonna be having the maximum health and we're gonna be saving the, the health to the maximum health. So we're gonna type maximum health equals health. All right, so if you change this number later, it's gonna also set to the maximum health. So this is always gonna be correct. And the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to go to the update function and now we're going to be changing the text. So we're going to go over here and type health text dot text equals health. So this is the current health of the player and also we're going to type plus and add these symbols and we're going to be adding some text. So we're going to type space this symbol and also another space. And now we're also going to type plus and maximum health like this. All right, so the next thing that we have to do is also we have to calculate the current percent of the health so we can actually show it on the health bar. So we're going to go over here and type health bar dot value equals inside the bracket, we're going to be setting this to float and type health. And now we're going to be dividing this by inside the brackets again, type float and maximum health like this. All right, so over here, as you can see, we're dividing current health with the maximum health. And by doing this, we actually get a percentage so we can actually show it on the health bar. So right now, if you save it, go back to Unity, scroll down. First of all, we have to also link the UI. So we're going to go and link the slider and the text like this. Now we can click play. And now, as you can see, the health is currently set to 100 and also the maximum health is 100. Now we can go to the character and change the current health. So we can lower it over here, as you can see, and as you can see, the health bar is working. All right, so the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to go over here and we're going to add a function so we can actually damage the player. So we're going to go over here and type private void on trigger enter like this. And first of all, we're going to check if the other dot game object dot tag is sword, which means that the character has been hit by sword. So we're going to type sword over here. And inside over here, we're going to lower the health. So we're going to type health equals health minus 25 like this. And we're going to be saving this. Now we're going to go back to Unity and I'm going to add a sword to the game. So I'm just going to click over here, drag and drop this over here and go to the scene view and go to over here. We're going to drag and drop the material of it. And now I'm going to move it a little bit forward like this towards the camera. All right, so this is going to be my sword and I'm going to go to over here. As you can see, here's the tag. And right now it's untagged. So we're going to go over here, click it, add a new tag. Over here we have to name it the same way we named it in the script. So we're going to type sword. And now we can go back to our sword over here and select untagged and select sword like this. All right, so this is going to be fine. The next thing that we have to do is also we have to add a collider. So we're going to go over here and type box collider like this. Now we can select this and you can actually change the size of it. I'm just going to keep it as it is. Now over here, we also have to select is trigger. And now this thing is set to a trigger, which means that we can detect a collision, but the object can still pass through another object. So this sword is gonna be able to pass through the character. And Unity is automatically gonna run this function when the sword actually touches the player. All right, so now we're just gonna reduce the size a little bit. So we're gonna change the scale to 75 like this. And I'm also gonna rotate it to 90 degrees. And I'm gonna move it towards the player. So as you can see, the sword is over here right now. I'm going to move it closer to the player so we can actually hit the player like this. So this is going to be fine. And now if you click play and now if we go to the scene view and go like this. Now we can actually hit the player with the sword. So we can just move this down. As you can see, it's losing health. And now as you can see, it has zero health. All right. So the last thing that I'm going to do is also I'm going to add a death animation. So we're going to go back to over here 
and I'm gonna select our player, go to the animator and go to over here. I'm gonna look for the death animation. As you can see, this is the death animation. And over here, we also have to add a parameter. So we're gonna add over here a bool parameter and add is that like this. This is gonna be fine. Now I'm just gonna drag and drop this over here. And first of all, we have to also disable loop time over here. And now we have to go to over here and just add the condition. So we're gonna go over here and click the plus, select is that over here. And this is set to true, so this is gonna be fine. We also have to disable has exit time and I'm gonna change the transition to rotation to 0.1 like this. All right, so this is gonna be fine. The next thing that we have to do is go back to our script and add the animator to our script. So we're gonna type public animator and just name it animator like this. We're gonna save this, go back to Unity, and I'm gonna select my character over here. I'm just gonna drag and drop this to the script like this. Now I'm gonna go back to the code, and inside of the update function, I'm gonna check if the health is smaller or equal zero. And if this is true, I'm gonna type destroy. And inside of the brackets, we're gonna type game object. And by using game object with the lowercase g, this means that this is gonna destroy the game object that this script is linked to. We can also add a delay over here so we can actually play the depth animation. So I'm just gonna type comma and set it to 3F like this. So it's gonna take three seconds and then it's gonna delete this character. Or here we're also gonna hide the health bar. So we're gonna type health bar dot game object dot set active and we're gonna be setting it to false. So we're gonna be hiding it once the health is lower or equal zero. And also we're gonna be triggering the animation. So we're gonna be playing the depth animation. So to do this, we're gonna type animator dot set bool. And inside the brackets, we're gonna add the symbols and type the name of it. So we set the name to is that like this. And also we have to type comma and true like this. So we're gonna be setting this parameter to true. All right, so this is gonna be fine. We're gonna go back to our game window, play our game. And now we can go to the scene view and actually drop the sword. So we're gonna go over here and drop the sword. Now we can get 75 health, 50 health, 25 health, and as you can see, this is working. All right, so this is it for this video. Thanks so much for watching. If this helped you, please leave a like on the video and subscribe to the channel.